Hey guys, so uh, this is a video update that will be on the blog but not the Kickstarter post and that's because uh, the Kickstarter post got pushed about an hour ago and uh, I wasn't about. Um, and you can see from the state that my hair is wet, life's been kind of busy. Uh, the first thing that we'd like to do is uh, is just apologise for the four weeks uh, wait on getting the last update out. Um, yeah, we've been really good I think at communicating and we've had a lot of positive praise for that. Um, over the last six months and um, we've been totally transparent and you know keep everybody in the loop but um, yeah over the last four weeks we haven't put an update out and it's just not good enough um, it's a black mark on our records and we're really sorry about that um, we yeah so we we have some kind of excuses but then again they're not really good enough as excuses the but let me just run through them anyway and you can kind of get an idea of our schedule over the last four weeks that may explain why communications dropped but um, Kind of productivity has actually been up. Um, our main focus has been getting the rings and getting them out. Like, it's simple. That's been like ninety, like, about probably about ninety percent of all of our time has been committed to that. Um, I've been in the US uh, now. I was in the US for two weeks, but I had two days traveling either side. Um, so that was basically three weeks of the month gone. And either side, I had meetings in London on the way out, and then meetings all through up the West Coast on the US. Uh, met a lot of backers and uh, got a lot of feedback, which is great. Um, we got lots and lots of rings out during this time as well. Um, what else has been going on? We've had a bunch of software issues that we've been dealing with, uh, nothing major, but we've had to deal with them. You can't just let them slide. Uh, and support for people that have already got the rings have been taking up a lot of time. Um, so let's go through this huge, huge update. And uh, this is probably going to take about 10 minutes. So what I may do is just kind of cherry pick on stuff. So um, I'm actually just going to be reading the update. I've not read the update yet. Um, Literally, this is the first time sat on my computer. You guys have been really, really eager to get feedback. So it just kind of goes to show you how little time we're getting for, for kind of all these tasks. So uh, where we're at on production. Um, so at the end of February, one of our team visited China. Uh, was there for about, I think, three weeks. Um, they also spent a bit of time in Hong Kong. Uh, and during this time, we discovered that the carbon fiber replacement that we'd sourced was not uh, kind of good enough quality. Um, it didn't look right in the ring and we we didn't, think that it really represented what we wanted to kind of push out uh, to you guys. We thought it would be a little bit disrespectful to send out some of that looked kind of tacky. Um, but they, they, so China basically said, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. It looks great. And we were like, yeah, but they were 100% certain. Um, we've definitely learned from this. Like, we don't trust anything, basically, <laughs> until we see pictures and facts now. Um, this kind of goes into this one thing of where we only picked one factory to do all of our production. We should have had... Like we should have had high availability from the start. I mean, on any software development, you'd have um, a, a kind of practice called high availability, and we should have done that with our factories. The reason that we didn't is because we basically they they gave us so much confidence, and 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 this is really a lesson to anybody that does any production in China. And um, the factory will say everything's great, and your prototypes will look good, but general rule of thumb is is get a production run done of probably two hundred or so units, and if they take a month to come then expect your bigger production runs to take two or three months. And if the quality is 50% on the production run that they do of 200 units, expect it to be about 20% on a larger production run. So really do be careful. Um, we spent a lot of time and we came to an agreement with uh, the factory in China um, and they basically said they could manufacture uh, 640 rings a day. Um, well, actually they said a thousand, but we were like, really, are you sure? And they were like, all right, maybe 640. Um, and then this, this takes into account the 20% factory QA failure rate and that failure rate is um, visual fails and uh, sometimes when they put the inlay into the ring it gets damaged as well which which is fine and sometimes you know uh, if you're doing some CAD work the, the machine may just nick an edge or something and, uh, and, and damage a ring blank. So the production on the new revised order of 18,000 rings including all the carbon fiber replacements actually began on the 1st of March uh, with the first 640 rings due to be completed on the 8th and this includes all the glue, uh, setting and polishing things, for example. Uh, and this order consisted of all the Kickstarter rings and some extra stock for re uh, returns and replacements and also some of our pre-order stock. So we do like one big bulk order. Um, now the factory are currently producing about 500 rings a day, so less than what they said. Um, but that's before it goes through the QA process. So they can create 500, but uh, that doesn't mean that we'll get 500 rings from them. Per day, um, this is pre QA, and then they run them through QA. And what we found was a bunch of the rings were fine through QA. We got about a kind of twenty percent failure rate, which is you know we 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 kind of 
accounted for that anyway and they failed some on QA at their end and we failed some on QA at our end. However, what we didn't expect was the uh, stealth bombers uh, to fail quite so dramatically. And I, let me try and explain this to you. It's, it's kind of complicated. So basically the stealth, stealth bombers, because it's a black PVD uh, ring with a black inlay, when they come to polish it down, it's really difficult for them to see exactly where they should be polishing. And what they were finding is that they were over polishing the uh, black PVD plated metal instead of the um, kind of enamel material that we use to cover the inlay. And so they were getting crazy, crazy. Uh, so basically that they're, they're saying, and, and we probably, you know, we probably find this quite truthful, that they were getting an 80% failure rate on the stealth bomber rings. And the stealth bomber rings were the bulk of our order. And the stealth bomber rings, they were 100% certain that they create them. No problem at all. That was that that was the ring that they were the um, most confident on. We can definitely do back, black PVD plating. We've definitely polished it before. Not a problem. And it turns out that we're now experiencing 80% failure rates. Which, which is fine because they fail some at their end, but the huge problem is is that for every, so that they create like 10,000 uh, black stuff bomber rings, right? Well, if, if they fail 80%, then that's 8,000 of our inlays uh, that have been damaged. And we don't get any of that back as a kind of compensation or anything like that. That's just totally wasted money. We'll never see that these rings, uh, we, we can't, we could probably sell them as seconds, but we can't give them out to Kickstarter backers. Like they they're just not of high enough quality. Um, so that really sucks with the stealth bombers. Um, and the, the stealth bombers, as, as you guys probably know, they've been the bane of my existence. The, first we had the uh, first we had the carbon fiber issue. Um, and now we've got the polishing issue. And you know, this is after we've had prototypes in a minimal production run done as well. So we've kind of done due diligence on this, but it's still bitten us in the butt massively. Anyway, so that's that's the first section done. So the next section section is the kind of the key numbers where we're at. Uh, of the eleven thousand three hundred and twenty one rings that have been delivered to us so far, so it's pretty good. I mean, we're up to eleven thousand rings that have delivered been delivered to us. A uh, thousand have been uh, recently sent to our U.S. distribution center. They go to U.S. and Canada. Uh, Twenty three hundred have just arrived with us in the U.K. So we've got basically like three thousand three hundred rings going out on Tuesday because Monday's a bank holiday. Today's Monday. I'm recording today. So they're going out on uh, Tuesday. So basically, yeah, we'll run them through QA. Uh, as soon as we run them to Q through QA, they go straight out. And we have, we have a bunch of people and um, team working on that. And that's not a sticking point for us. We've got a good process in place. People have been asking for uh, what stock control system we've got. And we just have a bunch of spreadsheets. It's not that complicated. We don't need to massively over-engineer these things. We have a spreadsheet that we query. We, we find out what rings we've got in, in stock from a, a shipping list and we query that. We say, which orders can we fulfill? We fulfill the orders as it delivers us the query. We print them out and then we pick the labels. And uh, yeah, and, and it's really not that complicated. Um, but out of the 8,021 uh, tested rings, we failed 2,357 uh, after a second round of our QA testing. So uh, the actual number of uh, viable backer ready rings is down to 5,664, of which 3,118 have actually shipped. So, you know, out of that 11,321 rings that we've actually been sent, right, so that's what we've had in total, only 3,118 have been shipped out to backers. I mean, that just gives you, it goes to show you the the, uh, the scale of, of what our expectations are, um, and, and the kind of level of respect that we want to show the Kickstarter backers to make sure that it rings right, it would really hurt us and you guys if we sent you a ring that was not, you know, beautiful, that wasn't right. We want to do a good job, and if it takes a lot, if it takes a while uh, longer, it sucks, but it means we get it right, and uh, and we kind of believe in that ethos. And um, we are sorry for the delays. Uh, we're sorry for for the for kind of our mentality on that, and it, and we are, we try to shift and, and uh, we've. Uh, empowered a bunch of the people on the forum to uh, give out some of the visual fail rings to, to, develop, to developers and people that are wanting to get involved in the project. So we're not just being totally wasteful, um, but it would be impossible for us to fulfill a visual fail ring and then send you a visual pass ring when that actually comes in because that just wouldn't be, it w wouldn't work out a cost effective because of shipping and packing and all of these things. So we just basically have to wait until we, we get the uh, QA pass rings in. Um, so 2,421 uh, rings um, out of those 11,321 rings, 
uh, are in our UK uh, distribution center. So they're basically here now. So that's including that 2,200 that just arrived on Saturday, which two days ago. Again, bank holiday in the UK at the moment. Um, and they're being packed up um, literally as we write this. So I think I think uh, maybe some of the teams in today. I've not been in, like, as you can tell. I'm literally just getting up to start in my day. Um, and 49 of the collections have been shipped, which is bizarre. And 497 uh, are semi-packed up. And basically semi-packed up is uh, they'll have uh, the box in, the sweet spot stickers, the inlays, uh, the chain and maybe one or two of the rings but not all three of the rings and we'll be just be waiting on that last ring so the, the numbers are big and we're getting through them um we're kind of at this uh we're at the top end of productivity now uh, and shipping's actually been pretty good from china like we so we agreed on uh, a box a week and that's basically what we're getting which is costing us quite a bit because we're having to pay for the extra packaging and customs and stuff but hey you know it means we're getting rings out so kind of everybody wins and why we didn't adopt that approach early on was uh was possibly an oversight on our part um, so a bunch of questions that you guys are asking, uh, shipping production FAQs, uh, from production to fulfillment, how long does it take? Um, basically there's a, there's four weeks, uh, that goes from when we place an order with our, uh, inlay provider. Um, and that's standard with creating inlays. Uh, we're actually a really small order firm, so we don't get prioritized. They're used to dealing in the millions. We're, we're ordering it in tens of thousands. So four weeks is kind of to be expected. Um, and then the inlays go into the ring blanks. We pre-order the ring blanks whilst we're waiting on the uh, inlays, naturally. So the blanks are then ready. Say if we've got a PVD coat, then that takes an extra week. But that's done in that four-week lead time for the inlays. And then it takes about seven days for the ring to be completed. Um, and then kind of get the shipping list together and ready to ship. Um, so the rings then go from China to Hong Kong to either the UK shipping center or the US shipping center, which takes, uh, we've said, three or four days. Uh, it depends. I mean, it, yeah, like it says on the update, it does depend on the customs holdups. Uh, we've had it in, if it arrives on, say, a Friday, then we process the customs payment on, say, Friday afternoon because we get a notification. Then it can take through till Monday or Tuesday for us to get the delivery. Uh, and then when the rings arrive with us, we have all the necessary shipping material just ready to pack as soon as they basically land. We, we Q, QA test every ring twice um, and then we, we pack them up. It's a real kind of... We, it's a very straightforward process for us now. We've done it so many times. Um, we then post them with the uh, Royal Mail uh, in the UK and USPS from the US. And depending on where you are in the world, so you, say if you're in the UK, uh, it takes like two days. But if you're uh, uh, anywhere else, it could take one to 10 working days. But kind of countries that we've had um, uh, the significant delays with, and we call them significant, it's not the end of the world, but they are longer delays than what we'd like. Uh, places like Saudi Arabia, Brazil, uh, Argentina, uh, places where the postal system um, it is kind of notorious for having delays and if you are in one of those places then just be mindful that the ring can get caught in your postal system for a while until you get it to there but we, we've been pretty happy with the actual delivery rate we've had very 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 few rings uh, kind of go missing in transit which is great uh, next question can you tell me what day I will receive my ring um, basically we can uh, give you a rough estimate uh, it depends when uh, China ship the ring and it depends if it passes QA or not. Um, so, yeah, it, it's not something that we can kind of just say to you specifically as your backer with this order when you will get your ring. It We just basically say it's going to be within this time frame. We, we're aiming to get it in this shipment. Um, next question was, why did you offer so many designs if it would make the manufacturing process so complex? Um the factory basically said it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, again, this goes back to that ability to us putting complete confidence in them and uh, visiting them so many times and them being absolutely 100% sure and adamant and us seeing the facility and being confident and the prototype runs being great and yeah. Uh, it's now several months overdue, why the delay? Uh, we've said that the expected to exceed our funding goal was a reason. Um, Yes, I mean, that's truthful. We didn't expect to hit it by the way that we did, but that's not a good enough reason, really. Um, the, kind of the main reason is it's covered in the second paragraph. We've, we've, so when we first uh, started out with the ring, we started out with a stainless steel. Uh, we were tuned in later. Uh, we had very basic app functionality. Um, there's loads of stuff that just basically wasn't done at that point. Um, and... Uh, and, and really like, so we introduced all these extra designs as well. Uh, we basically improved the ring so much during this time period. Uh, and now you might say, well, I didn't want that. Well, 
yeah, you may say that, but the actual improvements that we've made are going to make the you know the product so much better. Uh, tuning to the titanium was a huge, huge deal. It took months. Uh, improved quality of, of uh, visuals, uh, the, the app stuff like having translations in there, I18N, uh, all of the bug fixes that are in there, all of the kind of the forum and all of the community that we've built around it. So I'd I'd agree that the um, that the uh, delays have sucked. Um, we'd have rather that their rings were just out in October when we said we were going to get them out and they would have been perfect at that point. Um, but instead of kind of burying our head in the sand and saying, well, we have to wait for the rings before we can make any next steps, we've done a lot in that time um again we are sorry though about the delays you know there's no doubt that it's not that it's something that um that kind of plagues a lot of kickstarter projects and when we first came into this we were totally confident that we wouldn't have any of these issues but yeah kind of in hindsight if i was to do another project i definitely 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 have multiple factories working on the product like if there was one thing that i'd change i'd have uh two of everything which i should have done in the first place and, and yeah hopefully other people can learn from my mistakes um but the other thing that i would say is that there's been a lot of positives from the delays uh, and you'll see that when you get the ring you'll see how how well the apps perform uh, you'll see how mature our kind of returns and uh, all of our processes i've been able to chat and stuff so yeah um there's been some comp uh, so the next question is uh, what's in the package uh, there's been some confusion um we've had a bunch of people uh, this should probably be higher up in the uh, the update, but never mind. Um, people saying that we've shipped them the rings, but we've not put the inlays in. How do I put the inlay in? Um, and I shouldn't laugh. This is something that we've not. This is something that I've not explained. But basically, we, when we produced all of the original inlays, we put in a uh, uh, sorry, all of the original stainless steel rings. We put in the inlay that was tuned to air, and that tuned to air inlay, we'd ordered. I think like forty thousand or fifty thousand of them, and um, but we couldn't use them in the titanium rings, but we had them in stock. But they're cool that, that you know they'll work great as just NFC tags. So what we said uh, is that we'll provide them as a freebie. So when you get your ring, you're gonna get the ring, which is gonna look you know something like, oh this is from a new factory by the way. So that's gonna look like this, and then you're gonna get your um, inlays as a separate thing. And the inlays look like let me just pick this out of here. I don't know if you'll be able to see those okay, but they look like that. So these just these little bits of plastic with an antenna and an IC. And they're totally separate things. You don't need to put anything together. It's all ready to go. Um, so don't panic when you open it. Don't don't think that it's not put together and fully assembled for you. It's it's ready to go. You just need to find your sweet spot and uh, bada boom bada bing. A uh, new forum, huzzah, we finally got it up. Uh, we recent, we're still uh, doing some uh, UX updates uh, just to make the, the flow better. But basically, uh, we've introduced single sign-on so we can have a uh, single login across all of the assets. And uh, we're really grateful for everybody that's jumping on and contributing to the forum. Uh, lots of really, really good conversations on there. Um, basically, a like, great place to go if you, if you first get your ring and you're struggling how to figure out how to use it. There's a bunch of people on there that'll uh, really kind of... Uh, talk you through it and, and show you pictures about where your sweet spot might be in case you're struggling to find it and all of these kind of really cool useful things and also if you're a hacker or a developer it's a great place to be because uh, there's loads of people open sourcing their projects on there so we're getting like uh, files going up on there we're getting uh, uh, people explaining how they've uh, solved the problem and what technology you're using what circuit uh, ball designs and all these kind of really cool interesting things so yeah, thanks for everybody that's contributing on there, and thanks for uh, everybody that jumps over there and, and, and kind of helps everybody out. Um, as a community, we're much stronger than just us preaching to you guys. Uh, next thing, uh, if you if you uh, next thing is the NFC Ring Unlock App Verification Code, which is a mouthful. Basically, you get your Unlock App with the NFC Ring that completely comes free of charge, and you have a verification code. So when you first run the app, it asks you for a, a username and password. Um, if you've lost your email, uh, then don't worry. Uh, if you hit up uh, me.nfcring.com slash validation code reset, the URL is in the update, which isn't below this because I'm recording this afterwards. But um, you can do that uh, uh, and get a, uh, a new validation code. But if that doesn't work, if it says that it can't find you, then just hit up the NFC Ring Control app and uh, you can register now. Uh, you can just totally use your ring uh, to verify that it's a genuine NFC ring. That'll create you. A verification code for the NFC Ring Unlock app, so uh, no need to contact through to support anymore. You can just do this all by your uh, by yourself, which is great. Um, next thing is feedback. Um, we've had some great feedback from people uh, who've got their rings. Uh, we've had loads of people um, 
kind of using the ring with digital door locks and sharing information. A bunch of people that have said, yeah, we've all got NSC rings in our office and, uh, and we use it to troll each other and all of these kind of great things. So kind of hearing all these great stories. Uh, thanks to Chris, who posted a video on, uh, on a very popular social tentacle, uh, who used his ring with a digital door lock. And... Um, yeah, it, it's really nice to get this. So, like, whenever we see a negative feedback, and I think maybe you guys know who I may be targeting this comment at, uh, whenever we see negative feedback on the, the comments uh, or, or any sort of personal attack, either on myself or anybody in our team, we uh, we have a we have a group of people um, who that's kind of backers that have been supporting us since day one, and we communicate with them, and we basically send an email out to these guys saying, look, we need to deal with this as a matter of urgency because this is a personal attack, and... And how do we feel about this person uh, uh, spreading this kind of like, hatred? Um, and and you know I've been about, about on the internet for uh, a long time. I'm uh, I don't get into flame walls. I think that they're completely pointless. Um, but we would ask that the tone is kept uh, civilized. Uh, that we you know we we get a lot of people emailing us saying that person shouldn't have said this. This is you know um, we again. The comments section is unmanageable. We ask you to use a forum um, for this reason, kind of. But let's try and keep the, the general tone of the project. Um, as a community, we, we feel like it should be the type of tone you'd use with your family or your friends. Uh, and any kind of behavior that is not positive or or is intentionally trying to damage uh, the, the kind of whole movement, uh, we should we should question that and just basically say you know is is this the type of behavior that we want in our community is this the type of uh feedback that we we want um again we're completely happy to take constructive feedback and, and criticism is fine but personal attacks i think we have to just make sure we nip in the bud early on and just say if, as a straight straight thing that they're not acceptable um yeah so let's let's just bear that in mind and then the next thing is event calendar this has been a long update um and the, the next event that we'll be at is DevOx UK, uh, which is the 12th and 13th of June. Um, and it's being held at the Business Design Centre in London. Uh, and if you guys are going to be attending that, then that'd be great to see you there. We'll be there um, mostly just to kind of meet developers, hackers, to get try and encourage more people to build uh, apps and uh, solutions around the NFC ring. Um, that should be really fun. And then, uh, yeah, final news is just kind of from me. Um because I was in the US, came back, and then got engaged. So, happy days. Um, so now you can probably understand why things have been kind of crazy and kind of busy. Uh, and sorry for such a long update. And we'll try and um, and get your rings out as soon as possible and get you guys hacking and playing. So, cheers for watching. For anybody that's watched all the way through, you've done really well to get to the end. <laughs> See you soon.